Okay, so good evening everybody, Sunday night and uh, time now is 8.58 Singapore time. Uh, weekly Facebook Live community service to my followers, readers, viewers and thank you for all the comments. I have gotten a lot from many of you last week on my TikTok and I'm still wondering how many of you actually are taking action to go and find something to do on your TikTok channel. All right, so I still get questions by the way. Interestingly, what happened was that last week uh, after the Facebook Live, there are quite a number of people who came to me privately and asked for a lot of advices. So if you are interested in knowing more about TikTok, I'm happy to bring this back one day, but not now because tonight I want to talk about servant leadership, which is some different topic that I can do, reason, uh, I have been a leader somehow for many communities throughout these last five, six years. Whichever community I go, somehow I end up being one of the leaders. And this question keeps coming back, like how the hell do I get myself into this position? Okay, so I want to talk about this tonight and in my new private Facebook group, which right now we have got like 90 people. So thank you for those who subscribe to my private Facebook group. And what happened was that again, the, the thing about uh, the topics that some people want to find out is actually teamwork. Like how do you build a championship team? How, what causes a team to collapse? So I would like to devote some time to talk about leadership tonight, teamwork tonight. And I will start in just about 30 more seconds. So if you are watching the Facebook Live right now, I would like you to let me know where you hang out so I can see there are 10 people currently watching the Facebook Live. So if you can just comment on the, uh, the session, the Facebook comment, let me know where you hang out, that would be great. All right? So let me just check my sound system. Let me just check, make sure everything is okay. Uh, the topic itself may not be so appealing to some people I know because it's leadership. It's not about making money, but I just want to go through this tonight. Okay, so let's start. This is a very important topic. Why? Because in this world, COVID-19, I call it pandemic, COVID-19, coronavirus, you can't work by yourself. You can't work alone. Uh, Kiyosaki actually said many, many times or many years ago that, yeah, so PY said, where do you hang out? Hang out is a term online. So where are you from? Where are you watching this Facebook Live? So PY asks, where, where do you hang out? Yep, you hang out from where you're watching. So if you are from Singapore, say that you're from Singapore. If you are from Malaysia, you are hanging out from Malaysia. That is what we hang out. It's a bit American because the word hangout actually started by Google back in 2012 when we have Google Hangouts. All right, so let me know where you hang out from, which country were you, are you watching the Facebook Live? That's what I mean. All right, so somehow I may throw in some American jargon or slang because a lot of my teachers are Americans, by the way. <laughs> All right, so coming back. So teamwork is something that is very important. And in this COVID-19 environment, you can't work by yourself. You cannot work thinking that, oh, by being a solopreneur, or I would call it a self-employed, you are able to, to work out something big. And typically, you experience things like, what if you are not able to do something and you need some additional resources? So part of the deal is actually resources from human capital. So as a result, we talk about the concept of team. Uh, I would like to actually throw in Singapore. Hi, Julian. Good evening to you. Thank you for watching. So I want to start with this. Not, um, I don't want to end up in political term. Okay, Stephanie, thank you from KL. So as you are commenting, I, I'm watching my device and I'll keep acknowledging you. Okay, so coming back, uh, if you are from Singapore, you know that July 10th is a very important day, not because July 10th is a public holiday only, but of course, uh, our Prime Minister decided to ask uh, the President of Singapore to dissolve the Parliament. And we are going to have a general election on the 10th of July. Okay, so if you are not from Singapore, you may not notice, you may not be aware, and it's actually none of your business. But people living in Singapore, you know the sarcastic drama have already started. Now, tonight I'm not talking about 
lead, I'm not talking about political, political things. I'm not interested in politics. And I do not want to talk about politics online simply because you do not want, you do not want to hear my opinion, all right? Because that by saying this, it means that I'm influencing you as a voter, how you're going to vote. Are you going to vote for PAP? Are you going to vote for opposition? I'm not going to influence you. But I just want to start with this concept called leadership. Think about how Singapore started back in 1965. Think about this. If let's say LKY, Lee Kuan Yew, our founding minister, our founding father of Singapore, uh, was still here. He's still here and he's still the prime minister of Singapore. His style of leadership, would that work in today's economy? Would, they, would that style of leadership work in today's world? So let's think about it. So people ask, okay, what is the best style of leadership? I call this a very difficult question to answer simply because it depends on the situation. It depends on where, where, where we are right now. So let's suppose when we have LKY back in 1965, and without his style of leadership, I usually term it as autocratic leadership. Okay, it's called autocratic leadership. It means that he says one thing, no one else can disagree. So think about this, if that's the case, would that work back in 1965 Singapore? I mean, of course, the history revealed that Singapore is one of the advanced countries in just a matter of half a century. We are one of the richest countries in the world. We have a huge reserve, and by, by, by the, then the fact is that the government has already depleted half of the reserve by introducing four budget speeches in the snapshot of just four months to save the economy. So we have the resources to save the country. So that is what the, 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 the government has done over the last 50 years with the autocratic leadership, it works, okay, it works. Without LKY's contribution and their subsequent prime minister's contribution, we won't have where we have, we will not have what we have today. So this is Singapore history for those who are not familiar with Singapore history. Okay, I'm not born in Singapore, but I do study Singapore history to a certain extent. So I'm not into the details, so do not ask me all the detailed nitty gritty stuff. I do know what I have to know, right? So now coming back to current situation. The reason why I mention, ser uh, I mention servant leadership, it is like, think about this. If LKY is still the Prime Minister of Singapore, will his style of leadership work? Then I would like to extend our discussion to China. Okay, so um, of course people who are watching the Facebook Live, you know that I was born in Hong Kong. Am I still interested in Hong Kong affairs? Of course, I'm still following very closely about the recent, recent bill that is going to be pronounced by the Chinese or Beijing government, making Hong Kong a one country, one system. That's what the Hong Kongers are very, very concerned. And the China star, Chinese government style of leadership, does that work? And why the people from Hong Kong has so much, so much complaints and so much frustration? Okay, so what I'm saying is that autocratic leadership style F obviously has its place, has its value. But in today's world, if you ask me whether autocratic leadership style work, I mean, in Singapore, you see that our prime minister's style is, have to, I mean, the style is more about Socratic. So the differences between autocratic leadership style and the Socratic leadership style is that the Socratic leadership style put the leader in a position that by, whereby he or she has to listen to the feedback, has to listen to the, 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 the observations or, or the people's on the ground's complaints in order to serve the country, serve the government, I mean serve the country, serve the fellow citizens properly. So, so credit leadership is actually the name of the game. It is a very popular term in the, I call it the capitalist economy, like in the United States of America, for example, if you think that Donald Trump is an autocratic leader, uh, I will ask you to just think about whether this is true or not, all right? So I'm not going into the politics tonight. I don't want to go into politics. I just want to start off with something called the differences in leadership style. So now let's extend to the discussion of what is servant leadership, okay? So I would like to actually start with servant leadership by focusing on these two things. Number one, servant leader is focusing on serving others. Okay, so that is number one thing. And then 
servant leaders look to build a team because he believes that success follows by building a team. So that is what I've done in terms of research of our servant leader. Now ask yourself, are you a leader? Are you a leader of your own team? Are you a leader of your organization? Are you, are you a leader? That is the question I have asked myself three times. Am I the leader? So I would like to actually quote me in terms of leadership, obviously the guru, the, 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 the number one authority will be John Maxwell. Okay, some of you, my, some of my friends are actually John Maxwell trainers, so you know this. So John Maxwell has this quote, when you decide to serve others as a leader, the team's success becomes your success. So that is what John Maxwell said, because he has 21 rules on leadership. And when I research on servant leader, this is what I got from John Maxwell. Okay, so this is the thing. When you ask yourself, why do you need to have a team as a stat, as, as I said at the beginning of the Facebook, fa Facebook Live, I've said that you can't just work by yourself. You want to grow your team. You want to scale your business to the next level. You need people. You need other people to join your organization or your community or your team because you need the leverage. Obviously, you and I, everyone has only 86,400 seconds or 14. Uh, okay, let, let's not talk about the weeks, but just talk about the seconds. 86,400 seconds a day. Like if you ask yourself, I want to be productive, okay? Productivity is actually defined by what? It's defined by maximizing your priority with minimum effort. That is what we call productivity. So in order to be able to do more and serve more, you do need somebody to come on board. So questions from my community is that, where do I find these people? How am I able to get them on board? How do I get team members who are willing to join? So you know what? The definition of team is actually an acronym. So the acronym I've got here is Together Everyone Achieves More. Okay? So you want to know how do you get the team? So first of all, you need to ask yourself, why do you need to have this team? Together Everyone Achieves More. So let me give you a pop quiz here for those who are watching live. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay, You'll, able, you'll be able to see this quiz, okay? So there's a concept of the word synergy. How many of you have actually come across with this word synergy? Synergy, by, way, by the way, is not an English word. It is a word that is made up by Dr. Buckminster Fuller, which is the root mentor for many of my mentors. Alice Mandoshian, Blessinger, Robert Kiyosaki. The root mentor is actually Dr. Buckminster Fuller. Okay, or Bucky Fuller. So Bucky Fuller came up with this word synergy. So my question to you is this, what's the, what is the sum of one plus one? What is, the, what, is the, what, is the, what is the answer to this question, one plus one? What is synergy about? So let me illustrate with one plus one. Does anybody have an answer to this? Okay, so if you do study Bucky's Fuller stuff, you know the answer is not the school answer. So let me give you a hint. The answer is not true. The answer is not true. But what is the answer? Does anybody know? If you don't know, you can say don't know, not a problem. So the answer is not more than true. It's a very specific number. What is the appropriate answer from Bucky Fuller's perspective? One plus one is not more than true. It's a specific number. Does anybody get it? Not, this is not 11 after this, not like the key answer, like one plus one is 11. No, it's not. Okay, so let me just demonstrate one thing. For those who are interested, I've got ice cream stick in front of me. Okay, so let me demonstrate this. So imagine I have three ice cream sticks and I, form, I, I use this three ice cream, ice cream stick to form an equal lateral triangle. Okay, so I have one here. Okay, it doesn't look like it's nice, but let me just pretend it is an equal lateral triangle. There's one here, okay? And then at the same time, I've also got another three ice cream sticks that, come, that I'm able to do an equal lateral triangle here. Okay, so I've got one equal lateral triangle and two equal lateral triangle here. So I've got two equal lateral triangle. So one equal lateral triangle and the other equal lateral triangle. So 
I want to ask you, like, how can you come up with an uh, answer that is four? So the answer is actually four. Does anybody know how to have two equilateral triangle? Okay, two equilateral triangle, and make four and using and you use two equilateral triangle to form four equilateral triangle. Does anybody know how to do that? Does anybody know how to do that? Okay. So the question I ask for those who just join is I've got six ice cream, ice cream stick here, by the way. Six ice cream, ice cream stick. So I said that, well, let me use three of them to form an equilateral triangle. So imagine you've got three ice cream sticks and then now you have the equilateral triangle. And because I have six ice cream stick, I don't have any, I don't have only one equilateral triangle. I have actually got two equilateral triangle. So my question to all of you is that how can I put these two equilateral triangles together and form four equilateral triangles? Does anyone know the answer? Does anyone know the answer? Okay, so if you, if you are struggling, if you are, if you are not sure the answer, the answer is like this. Does anybody know what is the name of this object? Let me just make sure that you can see. Does anybody know the object? This, what is this called? Does anybody know the name of this object? Okay, so if you don't know this, the name of this, uh, this object is called tetrahedron. T-E-T-R-A, H-E-D-R-O-N, tetrahedron. So if you think that this is a prism or pyramid, no. There are actually four triangles, equilateral triangles, four of these here. It's tetrahedron, Eugene. It's not pyramid. Pyramid has five sides. This is tetrahedron. Okay? So how do I come up with two equilateral triangle into four? All you need to do is just to do this. Imagine you have got a baseline, so this is one, te te this is one triangle. Okay, so you, you put light, put it on flat, light, put it on table. And then all you need to do is just to build the three sides using the other three ice cream sticks. Okay, I, don't have, I only have two hands, it's very hard for me to demonstrate this. But just imagine that you are putting the ice cream stick by creating a 3D shape. Okay, and then link them up together you'll be able to see something like this. This is a tetrahedron. I just fold one tetrahedron in the afternoon so that it becomes easy to see. Okay? So what Bucky Fuller says is that one plus one is actually four. Okay? So this is what he said. All right. So Jack, why, is it, what, why do you talk about tetrahedron? Okay. So let's talk about the nature. So I have a, 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 a slide for you to see I want you to actually go ahead and, and see this. This is a picture. Okay, so this picture is what? It is the nature. So if I were to ask you, what do you see on this picture? Can someone comment on the chat? Like, what do you see on this picture? Anyone? This is a very nice picture. So what do you see on this picture, by the way? This is a very simple question, don't think so hard. Okay, if you're watching, there are 13 people watching live, I know, I'm, I'm watching my device. So you see reflection, no, this is, the, this is not the answer I'm looking for. Because I'm asking, what do you see? Not reflection, reflection is your interpretation. So make sure, listen to my question one more time, what do you see? Reflection is your interpretation of the picture. It's not the answer that I'm looking for. Reflection, once again, is your interpretation of this picture. I'm asking, what do you see in this picture? Okay, so now people are getting very complex. You are complicating the story. How many of you see cloud? Do you see cloud? How many of you see water? How many of you see the mountain? How many of you see the trees? Exactly. Thank you, Jun Xian. 
This is why when I ask, what do you see? You give me answer like, oh, this is the reflection. Reflection is how you interpret using your brain based on what you see. Okay, so it's not what I'm asking for. I'm talking about what do you see in this picture. It's the nature. Correct. Thank you, Winnie. Awesome. So now the question is this. If let's say you do not have water in the nature, what would happen? If you do not have water as part of the nature, what would happen? So it's, let me just flash another picture for you to see. It may be a bit difficult. So let me show you this one. So let's say we have got the water here. As you can see, there's water here. Okay? So imagine the nature has no water. What could happen? Can human beings survive? Can the insects survive? Can any living object survive? Obviously, no. Okay? So what if we don't have sun? The sun is missing. So you don't see the days, you only see the nights. What could happen to the nature when your nature has no sunlight? What could happen? Again, can human beings exist? Can the living objects exist? Can they still live? Obviously, no. Good. What if we are just live in water? We are not on the ground, no earth. No earth, no mountain. Say so no ground, no earth, no mountain. We are just living in water. Human beings cannot survive. Okay, final thing you can't see, but you can feel, you can smell, because without that, you also would not live. That is the air. Okay, I'm not into what I call the chemistry, the H2O, or the CO2, or the O2. I'm not talking about that. Just think about human beings. What, does human be what do human beings need in order to breathe? You breathe in oxygen, and you breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay, and the plants, they, the breathing cycle is completely reversed. They breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. As far as, as, far as this is the chemistry lesson I know, I don't remember anything else in chemistry except for this particular one. So let's think about this. Nature is running in such a way that you do need the mountain, you do need the air, you do need water, and you do need sunlight. One of these that's missing, the nature will collapse and we will all distinguish. Does that make sense? So when I talk about a team, the team's function is very similar to these elements of nature. That is, people work together, they come together for a particular reason. And if you miss an important element of the team, the team will just disappear. So the first thing you need to recognize is that a team is a team because we have people work together. Now, therefore, the next question I want to ask is that how can you become the teacher? Number one, you have to accept this. I actually share one Facebook Live with my private Facebook group on Monday night, not next tomorrow night, but the last Monday night, I talk about as a leaders. Leaders are teachers. So are you willing to step up as a teacher in the first place? Because all leaders are teachers. Especially in the pandemic, in this particular crisis. If the team needs you, you can't say, well, you know what, this is not my time. This is not the right time for me to step up. You know what, everyone steps up, I don't need, my, I don't need to do that. Right? So if you think that way, then may, you may not be, this tonight Facebook Live may not be relevant to you because if you decide not to step up, then please get out of the Facebook Live. The discussion won't be relevant to you because I believe what my teacher blessing says: teachers are leaders, leaders are teachers. You've got to step up and do something about it. Okay, if your team is re, is really waiting for you to help. Your team is is going to die if you are not stepping up your game. So you've got to lead. The question is, how the hell do I lead? Okay? So because the problem is this, number one, I don't see myself as a leader. This is the mindset issue. I'm not born to be leader. How many of you have heard that someone said, I'm not a leader because I'm not born to be a leader? Okay? Leaders are born. 
versus leaders are trained? Okay, this is the question. And the last one is, I'm not good enough to be a leader. Somebody else better than me. So that's why they deserve to be a leader. So again, the problems I see in the leadership world is, why is only a few people, when I say a few, I'm not saying just a few, but I'm saying that a minority of people end up ending up being leaders. Because the majority of people have these little voices. They don't see themselves. Last week on the Facebook Live, on the TikTok Facebook Live, I talked about B do you have. If you have the leadership skill, but you don't see yourself as a leader, that is a problem. And if you, if you see yourself that you're not born as a leader, but a follower, then it's another problem. If you see yourself, you're not good enough, and that's why you choose not to be a leader, I mean, that is your problem. That's why I put it as the problems, okay? So now, the next question I ask is, okay, Jack, I got you. I'm willing to step up. I'm willing to see myself as a leader. I'm willing to learn the leadership skill, and I will be mastering my literal voice so that I will say I'm good. What's next, okay? So the next thing will be your challenges. Number one, there are four things that happen in any single team. How many of you have been, have, let's say if you have a team, have you currently has a team, my question is that have you ever, ever been asking trainers to train your team? Like some trainers love to do things called team building. And this is my question to my participants sometimes. Like, have you engaged some trainers who are coming to do a team building activities for you for one day or two days? And the guarantee of the training is that, you know what, they will be alike. People will be the same. Okay, so conflict will not exist, not even reduce, but it's disappear. My proposition to all of you ladies and gentlemen is that if you do get team building, team building trainers, will promise you that after the training, people will be alike and there won't be any conflict. Fire the team building trainer straight away. Why? Imagine the whole team look alike, behave alike, sound alike. Why do I have a team? So this is a very interesting question. If every single one of you is the, is the same, then what is the differences? So the number one thing I see is that you, there will be diversity. You will never ever have a team where members look alike, sound alike, behave alike. There might be a few members who are like that, but the whole team behave the same. Come on, man, this is just theory. In the real world, I have never seen such thing. So there will always be diversity coming in. Number one, there will always be diversity. And I want you to respect, and the key word is respect, Respect diversity. Accept and respect. Respect the fact that you have team members who are not like you. And this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly okay. This is the key. Number two, like what Leanne just said, I mean a while ago, the word is interdependent. The key word is interdependent. You do not want, as a leader, to be the one leading the team by giving your time, energy, 100%. And what you're expecting is the members follow your direction and instruction. It's like without you, they cannot survive. You want to train your team members to be interdependent. That's another thing you need to understand. The challenge, one of the challenges is diversity. You have to respect diversity. Number two is to accept that people will work interdependently, okay? And how many of you would want the team to last longer? I won't say long, but longer. Sustainability is another challenge. Like you build a team today, but the team suddenly collapse in six months. It's not sustainable. And then, what is the culture of the team? Does the culture of the team inculcate forms of creativity? So these are the challenges that I've seen. Diversity, interdependently, sustainability, and creativity. You need these four aspects or elements that exist in the team. That is the challenge. Let me just break it down further. What, what do I mean by that? Okay, so number one, diversity. The key word is respect and embrace. 
Remember I said in the example, if you have a team building trainer coming in and say, my job is to help everybody look alike, behave alike, fire the trainer straight away, because I've never seen such thing. For example, if the nature is not working this way, everywhere is water, 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 water. Will you and I survive? Some of you have already said early on, cannot. Because you need different elements working together. And therefore, the diversity is about different elements. Okay? Number two, the question is about... about um, the question is about interdependence. Now, these are the three words that some people are too kind, some people are too, too, too generous, and they do this. Number one, independent. So, independent. What do I mean by that? You do not want silos in the team. So, what do you mean by silos? For those who work in corporate world before, when I say corporate world, I mean you work in big organizations before. So I came from PricewaterhouseCoopers. I can relate to that. People work in silos from different departments. It's like the departments are running as if they are independent departments. There's no cross-border or cross-departmental communication, so to speak. That's not cool. As a team, you need cross-departmental communication. You cannot afford people work independently, or else why do they get together in the first place? Number two, you don't want them to be codependent. What is codependent? It's like the, it's like a baby in the mother's womb have an embryo cord just plug in, so that mother's nutrition will just pump into the baby. That is called codependent. Again, you do not want people to be codependent on you it doesn't make sense as a leader because you want them to be resourceful. You want them to be able to make certain decisions within their responsibility. Okay, that's why we say we train people not to be codependent on me and without me, they cannot survive. That's not cool. Number three is not codependent but totally dependent on me. What it does mean by depending on me is like they will do nothing unless I give them the instruction. It's like they are really the executor of instruction. But you need to feed them with the information and the protocol so that they will get something done. You do not want a team to have these kind of issues. Working independently, working codependently, codependently and working dependently. That's what I mean by interdependence. Interdependence means the members from different team, uh, from different uh, department session of the team do have cross-line communication. And you as a leader has to have what I call the top-down approach, okay? And then bottoms-up approach to see what's going on in the whole context. I mean, when I say the context, I'm talking about the team as a whole, all right? So Liam mentioned the silos mentality is real, as reluctant to share information with employees with different divisions in the same company. This, is, this attitude is seen as reducing the organization's efficiencies and worst, contributing to a damaged corporate culture. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, big firms behave that way. At least this is my experience. Although the top-down approach is that, well, you know what, team members in different departments, you should have some form of cross-departmental communication. And why not we have this thing called a Friday Hangout? I use the word Hangout again. Friday Hangout and let's mingle with different departments. Get a drain, like PwC, I have this, we have this practice Friday string at 6 o'clock, we go down to the last time PwC building, which has been moved already, by the way. We have to go down to 17th floor on Friday, 6 o'clock. What do we do? That's where the managers, senior managers, associate directors, directors and partners get together and have a glass of wine in order to share information and have a chit chat to get to know each other. One other thing that you may not realize in order to be a PwC person, as a manager, we, I remember back in 19, uh, 1999, 2000, when I was promoted as a manager uh, for PwC tax department, we have to go to Malaysia for one training. Not the skills training, but what we call the drink training. So PwC managers are all drinkers. They have to train themselves to be able to do that. So rem I remember the last day of this five, day, five days training, it's a, it's a panel of glasses 
we all managers have to finish every single one. Red wine, white wine, beer, hard liquor, everything in one go. Some people could not take it and vomit. So that is the final test for us to be a manager. I mean, this is, this is one of the fun part of the corporate world that as an entrepreneur, if you started without this corporate world experience, you may not understand where I'm coming from. But that was the good time and that's why I can drink. I, although in Singapore we say responsibility is important, so when I drink, I don't drive. When I drive, I don't drink. I have the ability to drink because of this training long, long time ago. All right? So Eugene said UOB as well. Yep, UOB also have this training. It's like the drink is a way to build rapport. Okay, some of the big firms, big organizations adopt this practice. All right, so coming back, we have got another word, challenge, sustainability. There is your structure, the environment, the context. Understand something. When two people get together, there will always, 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 always have conflict. Husband and wives. Even though my wife and I married for 24 years, don't you think we have conflict? Now, let me define conflict. For some of you who wonder what conflict is about, conflict is actually defined, my definition uh, is defined as differences in opinion. That's it. Conflict doesn't mean that it is a quarrel, a fight or argument. It's just differences in opinion. So I, de I decide to vote for Workers' Party and you decide to vote for, vote for PAP. So we have differences in opinion. Doesn't make you right, doesn't make me wrong or vice versa. So that conflict exists in the world, that conflict exists at home, that conflict exists in the team. Because remember, people are different. Remember the word diversity. When you have diversity, you will have differences in opinion, which is, I call it conflict. Therefore, the first thing that I said earlier on is if you think that the team building trainer coming in to remove all this conflict is telling you that they make, they, the trainer wants to make everyone look alike, sound alike, behave alike. That doesn't happen. So that's why I don't, I don't know whether, whether, whether there are still team building trainers who are, who are doing all the shit. Because that, that's something very, very interesting. So what I'm saying is that conflict is a result of the team members. It's your context. It is your environment. It is your structure. Or even for that matter, the behavior of the people. Like working, working, like last night we have, uh, is it last night, Saturday night, we, I run a masterclass for my private Facebook group, two and a half hours, some of you were there, and what's happening is that people read the instructions differently. What happened is that it is actually a requirement to register the training via Zoom, and we have people who don't know, don't follow instructions, not to say that they don't follow, they miss the details. Like some people are detail focused, some people are not detail focused. Some people are action taker, some people are action taker but slower. Some people love community, some people love to be a lone ranger. Some people want fun, some people want routine. I mean, you cannot stop all these things. So one thing you need to realize, as I've been doing this Facebook Live as a weekly service, a community service to my viewers here on Sunday night, is to respect diversity and do not ever, ever judge another person's behavior and criticize them and say, your behavior is absurd. Your behavior is xiao. Your behavior is crazy. Never say that. Why? Because what gives you the right to, to judge another person? Just is it because your behavior is different from another person and then you start judging the other person? I mean, this is, this is something that I want to remind you no matter what topic I'm dealing with this is still the key never ever pass judgment on another person because you have no right to do that understand all right so next thing is this next thing is after sustain sustainability I want to cover the tips how do you actually build a team okay so this is the key how do you build a team some of you are actually asking me to to talk about this so I'm going to give you a few tips here Okay, and then you will see how it works. Oh, by the way, forgot this. I was looking for one more creativity. Let me show you this index card first, then I'll talk about the tips. Difference, differences in perspectives and differences using the lenses. So perspective and lenses or point of views are the same thing. So creativity is the result of you see the things that I see differently. 
you and I can see the same thing, but we have different responses or we have different ideas. So again, if you have everyone look alike, behave alike, sound alike, then creativity will not exist. The key word is diversity. It's because of diversity, you have differences in opinion or differences, I will call it conflict. You will also have attracted different ideas. Okay? So diversity is so important. I'm, I'm happy that Singapore embraced diversity because if you ever, ever criticize a particular ethnic group in Singapore, you know the consequence. Same thing for Malaysia. You have to respect the diversity of, the, of ethnic culture. You have to respect the diversity of people. So in the context of a team, you have to respect and embrace the diversity of different people. Just because someone is a slow decision maker, you do not say that, why are you so slow? Like, can't you make decisions like me? I'm a fast decision maker. Again, that's not how you become a servant leader. Because you are not serving other people. You are actually an ego leader. E-G-O, e -E ego leader. Because you think for yourself, not for other people. Does that make sense? So far, so good? All right. So, so let's, talk about, let's talk about some of the tips. Okay, so some of the tips. And I'm happy to say that this Facebook Live I can end at 10 o'clock for sure because I have just a few more cards and I'm done. All right, so number one. This is the tip number one to build a team. How many of you realize that to build a team, first of all, you must have a mission? For example, mission is the word why. Why do you want to have a team? What is the mission of the team? What do you want this team to achieve? Why? The purpose. Because if you have the purpose, then the how become easy. So there's a very famous saying called the easier, the bigger the why, the easier the how. Okay, so I talk about this. The bigger the why, the easier the how. And by the way, Alex Mandoshian just tested me and said his three days is over. I will respond to him after this, after this Facebook Live. Okay, thank you, Alex. All right, so then the question is that you must have a team. So I have this thing called MTM, not missions to millionaire or missions to million, but it's MTM principle. Number one, you have to have the mission. The clearer your mission is for this team, the, the more concrete steps you can take for the team. That is my saying. If you are not sure why you build the team in the first place, or for example, in order to build the team because I want to make money. Okay, so if your reason, your purpose is to make more money, wait, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It is a purpose. But my question is that, do you see yourself having a bigger purpose or a higher purpose? So money is always the result of doing things right. At the same time, there's always a reason behind why you do certain things. So therefore, my, sub my, 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 my submission to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, is that you've got to know your why. Why do you build this team? Is it because you want to impact more lives of people? Is it because you want to serve the world? Or is it because of a particular reason? It could be a child history of yours and you have been unfairly treated and you want to build something big so that you can prove to the world that Limbei is able... So Limbei is actually my father. is a Hawking word that I use in Singapore. So it's just to prove that I am able to deserve to have something. So that's some possible missions that I have seen how other people build a team. For example, in Unstoppable, why do we have Unstoppable five, uh, three days event early this month? The reason why we build this team is because David Chua cannot do the Unstoppable by himself. I cannot do Unstoppable by myself. But what do we want? We see that the Malaysians, the Singaporeans during pandemic are freezing. They cannot do anything. They have not seen such a big thing in their life. So we want to help business owners to give them resources, ideas, to get out of this fear mode to do something during pandemic. That's the whole reason why we do Unstoppable. How many of you, if you are from Unstoppable, can relate to this? Right? This is what we have done and that's our reason. So when we fall under some setback or challenges or things that prevent us from moving forward, we often say this to ourselves, okay, let's remember why we do this in the first place. Let's remember our mission. How are we doing this to serve the people in align with our mission? So your mission has to be very clear. And then number two is this, the team. So the thing is that as a servant leader, you always put you behind the team. 
you do not put your interest in front of the team or ahead of other members because me is always the last. Self-interest is important because after all, it is human beings need. I understand, but when you build a team, you've got to have a clear reason or purpose and then you have to put the team's interest first. Your team's interest, in fact, is more important than your interest. And therefore, what happens is this. Once you follow the MTM principle, that's the tip number one that will give you a structure, a context. Okay, that is the structure and a context. Now, something that I don't have a cap to explain, but I like to mention this tonight, I mean, at this point in time. How do you, how do you have members of your team show up or pop up in your life? Okay, so this is the thing. I teach my students, my participants, first of all, you've got to be absolutely clear your own values. So you hear the word values again, you heard Melvin talk about X Factor, you heard about me talk, talking about core values, you may have heard on Banco we talk about the values, like the, word, the V word happens everywhere. So again, the question is, in order to attract members to join you, you do, not, you do not ask members, members, please show up in my life and please join my team as a result. Because from my experience, how I build my team is to first of all understand my values. When I understand my values, the universe will get the message and then will find somebody who will be complement to my values. I won't say find the same value, the values will complement with each other. That's where I'm coming from. Remember, I talk about diversity. Let's say my, 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 let's say my value, my one of the key top value that I have is integrity. Okay? So I'll talk about this concept later, integrity. There's another story on this. So if my core value is integrity, what I need from team members is certain is other things. So for example, the universe will look for members coming to join me, okay, because the values somehow complement with my values. This is let the universe do the job. But in order for the universe to do the job properly, you've got to declare your values and you have to be very clear with your values. So thank you, Li Yan, for commenting. Yep, that's right. Number two, once you have the word value, let's say integrity, you get to, you have to give a definition. I'm not saying that you have to look for dictionary definition, but what does the word mean? So integrity, for example. I very often in my ethics training for the accountants, integrity is number one because there's our professional conduct, uh, uh, we call it professional conduct rule. Rule number one is to behave, in, be, behave with integrity. But the funny thing about integrity is that, I won't say funny, but the, but the professional definition of integrity is to behave honestly and being straightforward. So that is the definition of integrity. My, my question is that in your own work, do you agree that integrity means honesty? It means straightforwardness. You can say, well, I don't agree because integrity to me is just about being honest, not being straightforward, but it's being honest. So you see we have differences in, op differences in definition. You may say your value is integrity. So this is something that you need to dig deeper to understand what is your definition of the value word. Because the value word is just a word, it's just a few words, it is abstract. You need to give a definition, deep definition so that it makes sense to you. And when someone asks you or make inquiry, okay, what's your definition of integrity? You are able to explain. So my definition of integrity is this. My definition of integrity is not honesty, it's not straightforward. Mine is just like this. What do you see here? So what do you see here? Okay, so I typically do this in my ethics training. What do you see here? So the thing is this. The thing is that you will see the word, you see the letter C, because there's a letter C here, isn't it? Right? But my point is that when you see the C here, which part of the C you'll be interested Majority of people actually said, I'm interested in this gap, this open loop. Because there's the gap, there's the loop that attracted people's attention. How come there's a gap there, right? So my definition of integrity, 
is actually this word, which I use the same definition from Blessinger's mentor, Matt Newton, is about wholeness. So my integrity is to fill the gap, to seal the crack, so that it becomes an O. From a C becomes an O. That is wholeness. Wholeness is my definition of integrity. But if I do not explain this to you, you may think that, oh, your definition of integrity and mine should be the same. And you know what happened? When you've got team members coming on board, and then you find out the values, oh, okay, team members A, B, C, you all have integrity as your value. Awesome. But what happens is this, when something happens, your one thinkers pop, up, pop out and three thinkers point at you and say, why are you not behaving with this word integrity? And then the members say, no, come on, what is that? Because I am I'm behaving with this integrity, high level, without any dispute. And then you end up finding out that this is because of the definition issue. So don't just take the word, the value word in abstract as the end. You have to dig deep to have a definition. And when somebody asks you what is your definition, be prepared to answer. And likewise, when you find out from someone, okay, okay, Tom's, what is your, what is your, what is, what are your top values? Or oh, my value is to have fun. Okay, good. Fun. Fun is a word, right? Okay, so I, I ask, what must, what must it happen when you, for you to see fun, for you to feel fun? What must have happened for you to feel it, for you to see that, or for something that sounds fun? Ask this question. So the person will say, oh, fun. Ah. So whenever I've, do, I've done something that is totally unpredictable, that is fun. Oh, so that is the definition of fun. So you are actually looking for something that is not boring, not predictable. So you see, by asking that question for what must have happened, for you to say it is fun, that will help you understand, oh, this is the way you talk about fun. Because you know, my fun is just go to a casino, put the chips on the table and win some money that is fun for me. You see? Definite, definitional issues. So this is a very important point and thank you Li Yan for, for endorsing this. So coming back, the thing about values is you got to be clear with your own values. That's why Melvin so talk about X factors. What are your core values? What do you stand for? As a speaker, as a trainer, you got to understand your core value, your core value proposition. Okay? So as an entrepreneur, when you now have when we want to build a team, you've got to understand your values, your proposition. See, whichever roles you are playing in different contexts, you still need to be absolutely clear with your own values. And be prepared to define what the value means to you. Okay? So once you have that that universe will do the job. And that's how I bring, I built a team of closers last year. They just come on board. And I don't even need to like search hard for people. And these people just come to me. It is as fast as it can be, at least from my experience last year. Okay? So the next thing you will ask is that, okay, now I have a team. Okay, finally I build a team. What do I do next? Okay, so this is the tip number one mission team and me so it's a priority here and you need to understand the values of yourself and your team members okay number two this is another important thing to take note is these two questions why are you like that so the first question is why are you like that what is why are you like that well it's a why are you like that so you say that you your your values are integrity your values uh, is integrity, contribution, family. Why are you like that? Like, why are you a person who believes that uh, you must you must have a high purpose in order to in order to do something? Uh, why are you a person whereby when you have to make a decision, you actually use your logic, you do not use use your emotion? And why are you like that? You're just an action taker. You just do 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 do. You don't plan. Why are you like that? So therefore, what happened is that again different personality comes in to dictate or to define how you behave. So again, it is an awareness issue. You've got to be aware why you behave that way. So that's why we have this question, why are you like that? Okay? So the thing that goes on is that once you know 
you have got your, you understand why you why you like that, then you actually get the team together, and every single one also go through this question: Why are you like that? So team members ask yourself: Why are you like that? 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 So this is a self-discovery process. The chances are, most people will love to find out more about themselves. Like I've been to a lot of personality development or profiling tool, by the way, you name it, MBTI, this, Enneagram, Banco, and, 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 and a lot of these, like, it, it just says that a lot of people just love to discover themselves, to understand themselves as if they do not understand themselves, right? So the thing is, the thing is that we ask this question, why are you like that, is to find out the differences in terms of their behavior. Remember, there's no good behavior, there's no wrong behavior. There's only useful behavior, there's only unuseful behavior. So we do not judge a person's behavior as good or bad. Because well, who gives you the right to judge? Remember the word, who gives you the right to judge someone's behavior as being good or bad? You can only say that the, the, the behavior is useful to you, not useful to you. That's it. Okay, so once you have gone through this, why are you like that question? Then now, with the team profile come out, then we can ask ourselves, why are we like that? So you notice that the, def, the, the two questions, one is focusing on the word you, okay? The other one is we. What is the word we about? We is the team. Why is the team like that? Okay, so for example, in your team, you have got multiple people who are fast action tickets. They just do, 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 do. But there's only one member who is a planner. So what happens is that when the team decides to do a project, it happens that the team just do, 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 and no time to plan. And then you didn't get the result. So why are we like that? Is to answer the question based on the profiles or the behavioral, behave, behavior profiles of the team member. What can happen to this team? What are the what are the challenges this team is facing? For example, do you lack a decision maker? Do you have a person who is good in numbers? Do you have a person who is very good in looking at the details? Do you have a person who is creative, who loves to give a lot of ideas nonstop? And do you have a person who is, who is, uh, who is uh, very nurturing in nature, be able to serve other, serve other team member? So once I know the team profile, then we can answer this, why are we like that question? And therefore, we can then map out the strategies, how to make sure a team still achieve the goals and fulfill and align with the mission. And yet we can minimize, not remove by the way, is minimize the potential conflict. So we go through this process called why are you like that? And why are we like that? Okay, so coming back here, so for example, we have got this, uh, the mountain, the water, the sun, and of course the air, which is the wind. So they function together to create this ecosystem. Do you see that? Okay. So why are we like that? For example, is like some people happen to be fast decision maker. How many of you can consider yourself a fast decision maker? Okay. And on the other spectrum is how many of you believe that you make decision a bit slower. That's one thing. How many of you like to do, it, do things by yourself? And then how many of you would love to do things with other people? So you need to understand how the ecosystem works and then you can deal with it. For example, if the sunlight is very bright, okay, in today's, today's the sunlight is very bright and people start complaining feeling hot. That's why we have air conditioner. That's how air conditioner becomes functional, to lower the temperature. If let's say the river has, does not have a lot of water today, what can we do in order to make sure everybody has drink? Well, we can design system to say that now we have this ration, uh, or ration exercise to make sure that everybody is able to be allocated with a few drops of water rather than you like how much you drink, I like how much I drink is up to us individually, all right? So if let's say today the wind, the air is not clear, it's not clear, what do we do? Well, air filter is put in place. 
so that the air becomes cleaner, so that everybody can breathe properly. So the reason why strategies can then be formulated is because we now know our point A. We ask ourselves this question, why are we like that? That's the point A question. When we have point A, then we can design strategies to not move to point B, but move to point A1, A2. 80% of the time should focus on point A. Point B is the return on investment. It's your goal, it's your dream, too far. I'm not saying that that is not cool. It's your vision, it's cool, you can see the direction. Yet, for the purpose of assessing the situation and strategize it, you always look at point A, A1, A2, A3, A4. That's my teaching, by the way. All right, so this is tip number two. Now, well, now let's move on to tip number three. So this one, perhaps some of you have heard of this before, is code of honor. Like I remember Eugene said code of behavior last time, or code of conduct, I still remember the story. I said it's not code of conduct, it's code of honor. So it's about the rules on behavior, okay? You need this. I'm sorry to say, you can't run an organization without SOP. But our organization is free. Why do we need SOP? But by the, by the fact that you say this, it means that you are a person who doesn't like SOP. You need SOP because behaviors must be monitored, must be measured, must be defined and agreed. So Blair Singer has this book called Team Code of Honor. So once again, I flash this book, I flash this term out, Code of Honor. And this basically talks about the rules, not on you, on your team member. It's the rules on your and your team member's behavior. That must be spelled out. If you do not do that, things will happen not nice. Okay, so what is, what is Code of Honor, by the way? For some of you who are not familiar with this concept, Mind me say one more time what is called of honor is the rules on the behavior of you and your team member. Give you a few examples. Number one, when it comes to dispute or disagreement, what do you do? What do you do? So Deborah says that you cannot, you can you can't scale without SOP. Yep, that is partly on the systemization side, uh, systemization side. This one, the core of honor is about the behavior must be defined. So I'm coming, Deborah, I'm coming from that perspective, not the scaling to systemize, but it is going to that direction on the behavior side. So for example, when there is a, a there's an agreement that is in dispute or called disagreement, what should the member do? Okay? So one of our rules on our core of honor is that when it comes to disagreement, we will fix it ASAP. Fix it ASAP means that we'll deal with it right now we don't wait we don't wait for the snowball effect to grow further and in order to fix it asap we go direct to that person we don't go behind that person and get the boss boss can you tell him not to do this please you don't do that you actually go direct to the person and be willing to call him or her out at the same time, you are being willing to be called if you are not following the rules. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Deborah. No problem. It's okay. So, one of the other rules, everybody in the team must sell. I don't care whether you are uh, customer support. I don't care whether you're doing IT. Everybody in the team must sell. But how do we do that? Good. Now let's, dis let's discuss how to make sure everybody sell in the team. The other rule is when you have, when you have realized that you play below the line, that is called not acting responsibility, not acting responsibly, okay? You do not blame, you do not justify, you do not shame our people, you do not quit. You will do whatever it takes to act responsibly again. It's our awareness. Okay? Another rule. Another rule is when you have, let's say, when you have someone who is not following the rule, 
not one time, not two times, it's like already a few times, what do you do? Like someone's behavior is unacceptable, but it's not just a one time offense, it's second time, third time, what do you do? Do you have a rule that says that if the person has committed three strikes, you kick the person out of the team? Or there will be a fine, there will be penalties imposed. But whether it's a financial penalty or whether it's some other hardship, I don't know. So you need to have these rules and lay down clearly. And the key thing to take note is you've got to agree, first of all, discuss. You don't use the autocratic leadership style and say, okay, this is the, these are the rules for this team. Boom, everybody agree, okay? You don't do that. As a servant leader, you have to formulate these rules in front and with your team members and let them have a say and let them agree that these rules are to be observed. Because if you don't get a consensus, you are just behaving like autocratic leader. A Socratic leader, a servant leader, seek opinion from other people and agree on a consensus basis. So once we have, th once we have this agreement in place, now you can post these rules on anywhere that is visible. And when someone is, who is not behaving based on the acceptable behavior, all you need is just to go back and point the finger to the rule. Look at this rule, what does it say? And then you can call the person out. And when you do not behave in the way that the team expects you to behave, somebody may just point the finger to the rules again and say, Hey, Jack. I have to call you out. Look at this particular rule. So now you see everybody has a code of honor, which are the rules on behavior that must be observed at all times without exception. So once you have that, you have got an A team. So the A team, first of all, the key thing to summarize is to respect diversity, to allow people work independently and have the creativity in place and build this team with the proper context so that it can be sustainable for a long time. This is key number one. Number two is to be able to understand yourself better. Why are you like that? What are your values? What do you stand for? And have some clarity with definition of this value. And make sure all the team members go through the same exercise so that you are able to ask yourself this question. Why are we like that now? So this is our point A of the team. Let's see what are the challenges that the team will face. Let's see what are some of the advantages the team will have as a result of this composition of the team member. Again, it's a point A question. So number three is to talk about the code of honor, which are the rules governing your behavior. Okay, so this is the thing. Now, when we talk about the building a championship team, building an A team, there will always be the other side, which is what we call what if the team is about to collapse? So I'll give you a bonus tip. So in the Facebook Live title, I say three tips to become an empowered servant leader, to build a team that is your dream. But if you have done something in the other side of the coin, the bonus tip is dysfunction of a team. Why would a team collapse? Why a team does not behave like a team? So I would like to actually use the term called dysfunctions of a team and this is a literature written by Patrick Lazioni, and he has a book on dysfunctions of the team. I highly recommend, apart from reading Blessinger's book on Team Co of Honor, pick up this book, Dysfunctions of the Team, by Patrick Lazioni. This is a very good book to read, by the way. So in Lazioni's literature, he talks about five reasons why a team will collapse. Okay, so let me just go through this very quickly. And I'm not like coming up with my own ideas, so I, I quoted Lazioni's literature. Okay, so if you want to find out from the source, Dr. Patrick Lazioni, that is the person. Okay, so the topic is dysfunctions of a team. So Lazioni actually said that the five reasons why a team will collapse or dis become dysfunctional is number one, there's an absence of trust. How many of you have a team? but the people don't trust each other. And this is why the team does not behave like a team. Because the trust is lacking. Okay, so this is the first reason. Second reason, people are too nice. They do not want to engage in conflict. Remember the word conflict is differences in opinion. 
So what I mean is that while I want to be the nice guy, nice gal, all I want is, okay, I will just agree for the sake of agree. I will never say no. When you ask me to do something, I will just do it. Whether I like it or not, I will just do it. So I do not want to engage in something called disagreement or differences in opinion. I'm afraid of this. So this is called fear of conflict. But how many of you can say yes many times without fail, and yet you can still deliver your stuff, deliver your project, deliver your timeline, deliver your task? Because there are people who say, I'm a yes man for a long time. I have not been saying no to other people because I don't want to hurt them. But I realize that the more I say yes, the more unhappy I am. Because a lot of jobs just keep loading at me. I cannot breathe. And one fine day, the Thailand tsunami, I use the phrase called Thailand tsunami, will just, will just come. Thai people are nice. But if the moment you decide to antagonize people from Thailand, there's research on this. It's a history point to take note. Thailand can give a tsunami to ruin the whole world. Thailand is the land of peace. But Thailand is also a land of destruction. It depends on how you see that. Okay? So nice people are nice, but when it comes to that point, the nice people can just flip the whole thing. All right? So this is called fear of conflict. Number three, we set the goal. This is the agree milestones for the team to achieve. Okay? The team member said, okay, let's do it. Say only. Okay? This is a hashtag say only. All right, so lack of commitment. What is lack of commitment? Okay, so you and I agree that I will deliver this project by next Monday. I say only. And you know what? I know I cannot deliver this. All right, so next Monday, perhaps maybe on Sunday or this Friday, I will say, hey, leader, uh, can I ask for extension? But you said already you can deliver by Monday. And I say only, can I have, can I have, a, can I have an extension? There's called lack of commitment. Because if you don't have 100% commitment to do certain things, the team will collapse. So what can we do to make sure that there is commitment? This is a very important thing that is happening in my team right now. Commitment. How do I ensure everyone is 100% committed? And there's a difference between 100% commitment and 99% commitment. So I'm using what Alice has taught me. So if this is what we call zero to 100% commitment, where is 99%? Do you think 99% is somewhere here or somewhere here? Actually, what Alice says is 99% is half of the distance between zero and 100. That's why in order to be 100% commitment, you are moving from 99, which is the midpoint, to all the way to 100%. It is half of the distance of of zero and 100. That's what 99% versus 100% commitment is. So another question is that your culture, does your culture encourage people to be 100% committed? Or do you have a culture whereby people can go slack? People can just uh, chill, although they, they are not 100% committed, you will still allow them to just say only. Does, does, your, does your team have this kind of culture? which is another reason why team collapse. Another one is that no commitment, no accountability. Okay, so let's agree that we will make 50 calls this week. Okay, so you are going to make 50 calls. Okay, so end of the week. So how many calls have you made? One. But you said 50 calls. But I only call one, one client. No accountability. Then how the hell do you expect people to do the work properly? No commitment, no accountability will cause the team to collapse, to be dysfunctional. Last but not least, remember I said in tip number one, it's all about the mission first, team second and me third. But the team here is in attention to the results of the team. It's like people are focusing on the self. It's the self-interest is in priority uh, of other, other interests. So you put your self-interest ahead of your team interest and, the, and, and other people's interest. So that is why when you do not have, when you do not pay attention to the results for the team, the team become dysfunctional. So this is by Patrick Lassioni. So this is called the, this topic is called dysfunctions of a team. So you can build an A team, you can have code of honor to govern people's behavior, but 
The other side of the coin is that these five factors can cause the team to be dysfunctional. You need to be aware of that. Because many times, apart from the fact that people are struggling with building the team, some people are actually telling me that they have got a team, but I seem, it seems to me that I can't motivate them because like I have got clients who are in MLM and the MLM leader some more, they say that was, I remember one time this particular client told me like she has got 300 people as her downline. I said, wow, look, they must be doing very well, right? 300 downlines. Yeah, but you know what? 300 people on the down, as my downlines, only 10% are committed. What do you mean by committed? The rest are just treating this as a hobby. Then what do you do with 270 people on your downline and they're just treating this as a hobby? Didn't you fire them? No la, I cannot fire them because I promised that when they join, I will support them. So you are telling me that they are not delivering your result for the team. At the same time, you find it hard to fire them. Did you actually set any agreement in terms of the milestone, the goalpost and the behavior? No, exactly. So you see you have a team, but it's like you don't have a team. You have a team, but you don't have a team. So I told her, okay, so what can you do? Number one, talk to these 270 people one more time. This is the final warning. If you still treat it as a hobby, fire them straight away. You don't want any bad apple in your team. So part of the team culture is you, at all times, do not allow bad apples. It's a term that I learned from Dan Lok. You just need one bad apple in the team, the team will collapse. So let's say if I, when I set up my community, which is what I have right now, I will never allow or tolerate any form of negativity. If I see a person in my community bitch, moan, whine, or BMW in short, I will just get the person out. I, the person will never ever come back. You don't tolerate any bad apple. Well, you do want to be like the soccer rule, give the person a yellow card and then a red card. No, straight away red card. It's a red card offense. Bad apple. So as a leader, you've got to be very determined on this. At all times, no tolerance of bad apple. So I told her, okay, 270 people, one more time, are you treating this as a hobby? Uh, are you serious? Okay, so get all these people out. The next, th next thing, the 30 people, now we need to have a serious talk. You said that you want to do something, right? Before you join my team and you want to make it a business for yourself, right? Let's get serious how to make this happen. Okay, so I told her to actually talk to these 30 people and then set the rules on consensus basis. To say, okay, what, must the, what are the goals of the team? Why are we doing this? And most importantly, what are the goalposts or accountability to be held accountable? So getting serious in order for the team to show the result. Or else, as a leader herself, she finds that Okay, I built such a big team, I feel on one hand I'm proud of it, on the other hand it's like the team is not giving me the results, like I'm the upline but I don't have money coming in. I say, yeah, because you don't, you don't manage your people properly. Not to say that you don't know how to manage, but you choose to manage the people that way, then of course this is the case, right? So the last thing that I said to her is that at any moment, if you don't see that the team members are a good fit, they may not be bad apple, okay, but they are not good fit. And what do you do? As a leader, you also have to be firm on this. When somebody is, does not fit the culture of your team, you have to let the person go. It's not because of bad apple incident. It's because the person doesn't fit the culture. And you ask, like, Jack, what do you mean by doesn't fit the culture? So for example, teamwork. Teamwork is emphasized as working interdependently, not independently. So as a culture is set in such a way that it allows cross-functional or cross-departmental communication, you, don't, you do not accept any form of solo communication, that is to talk to myself and not talk to other people. I decide to manage my, myself, I do not let other people know how I manage myself. That there's no cross-line reporting, that's what I'm saying. So once you have got this particular issue, that person's behavior is not what the culture can accept, 
you've got to make the decision to get get rid of the person. You can say, well, you are a good guy. All you do is awesome. I love you. As far as the team's culture is concerned, I don't see you as a good fit. And the person might say, you know what? Let me change. I will change. How many of you realize that the person say change? But human behavior is very difficult to change. Again, by saying only, does that work? If the person is willing to change, he or she will have changed a while ago. And he or she will have the sense of noticing that how come people are treating me differently? Have I done something wrong? And you know what? The person doesn't seek feedback from other people. And that's why he has or she has behaved in such a way. So all I'm saying is therefore, it is important to understand when there's a cultural difference, you have to let go of the person. It's very hard to fit everyone in the culture. Like this happens in corporate world very frequently. You have got a guy who is a very good salesperson. And you know what? The salesperson actually is a solo ranger. He can clock $500,000 a month in sales and he hit the target. But the team on the other hand feels that he is just a solopreneur. He's a solo ranger and he doesn't talk to other people. So as a team leader, what do you do? Do you fire the person or do you keep the person? So that is another very interesting debate as leader. Do you see him because of the result or do you see him because it's not a fit to the team's culture? It's your call. There's no right or wrong answer. I typically have a, have a, have a pop quiz in my business, business ethics course on this issue. But my take is that if the person doesn't fit the, fit the culture of the team, I have to let the person go. Maybe the person is suitable for other, other teams who encourage this kind of solo rangers culture. But that's not my team. My team needs team player. There's a saying, we say we need team players, we don't need rambles. In military, for example, a military like some, some of you may know Kiyosaki is a big fan of the military ways of training the members. Why is military way powerful? Because in military way, it is all about command, rules, and there's no so-called emotional acceptance or tolerance. Everything go by book. And therefore, the results is there. But my, some, my, propo my proposition for servant leader today is that do you want to behave 100% in the military terms or military way? Or do you allow some form of a bit more emotional, non-military way of managing the team? Again, you as a leader will set the tone. How do you want the culture to be evolved is your job. Nobody else can decide what the culture is of your team. You will be the one setting the context and you will be the one let the cultures evolve. But if you realize that the culture is evolving in the direction that is unwarranted or undesirable, you've got to make the call to, hey, stop, let us realign and put back the culture in, in place. So once again, team members may be bad apple. Team members may not fit to the, to, to the culture that you set. Either way, my take, I'll just let go of these people. Not to say that I don't love them or what, it's just that, you know what, in order, in order to see the team to the next level, you do have to make some firm decision. Okay, so that's what I want to say tonight. Oh, by the way, I have a masterclass coming up. The masterclass is going to happen this uh, this week, okay, I want to actually invite some of you to come for my masterclass whereby I will elaborate something more about these two topics on why are you like that and why are we like that. Okay, so let me just come back with the card first. It's here. Okay, so allow me because I just put the card somewhere. If you don't mind, just hang on for a while. Yes, this card. So I have a masterclass coming up. Why are you like that and why are we like that? If you want to know what this, what this tool is about, there's actually a tool on this. And this tool is called Tetra Map. Okay, so this tool is called Tetra Map. By the way, I have an upcoming certification class for Tetra Map, which will be held in mid-July. So I'm going to talk about this class. Or I'm going to send a link underneath as a comment of this video. Uh, Facebook Live, and if you're interested in that masterclass, I'm happy to talk about what this Tetra Map behavioral profiling tool is about and how I use it 
to build a championship team and how I use it to talk about why are we like that. And if you're interested in knowing more about Tetra Map and, and the opportunity is, is coming, that is you are able, you, are, you, you may want to be certified as a Tetra Map facilitator so that you are able to use the tool and to train your team and even your clients to customers. I'm happy to talk about the opportunity. Uh, by the way, for those who are not aware, uh, I'm actually a master Tetra Map facilitator. So I'm the master level, so I'm able to certify Tetra Map facilitator. So I'm running a Tetra Map facilitation certification class in mid-July. I'm happy to talk about the use of these two. I will give you the link as a comment of this Facebook post. If you're interested, come, just come for my master class. I will talk about how can you benefit from being a certified Tetra Map facilitator. All right, so there are, there are some opportunities available and it is going to be fun. I hope that you enjoy the masterclass when the link is ready. All right, so with that, it's not like the TikTok video whereby the Facebook Live where we have got a lot of people watching, but I appreciate 13 of you who are still watching. And for those who are watching replay, hashtag replay so that I know you're watching replay. And I want to acknowledge some of you. Okay, so Pern is here. Okay, thank you. Eugene, thanks for supporting me. Leanne, thanks for doing com comment tonight. Uh, PY, thank you. Andy, thank you. Uh, we have got Henry. Henry, thank you. Wendy is here. Sean is here. Thank you. Okay. Edith, okay. Thank you. And Deborah, uh, band trainer from North America, is dropped by. Thank you. Arthur, as usual, thank you. And then we have got Thank and Thank and Thank you. Okay. Even is here or was here. I don't know whether he's still here. Okay, so I want to acknowledge everyone. You, Humphrey is here. Okay, Humphrey, thank you for watching. All right, so whether you are watching still live or watching the replay or have come in earlier but you drop out, no matter what, I thank you for supporting me. I thank you for uh, dropping by on a Sunday night. So as you know that I do this not for money. I'm running this Facebook Live as a community service every Sunday at 9 p.m. Singapore time. So I will give you the next week's topic on Sunday morning. And remember, if you have any specific topic that you would like me to talk about, also comment underneath in this post so that I know you might be interested in something. All right, with that, that ends my Facebook Live for tonight. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, just one more thing. Share with me what is the one biggest takeaway you have learned tonight, whether it's because you're watching live or because you're watching the replay. Either way, I appreciate that. Okay, let me know what is the one biggest takeaway you have for tonight's Facebook Live. All right, so with that, I'll see you another time. See you next Sunday, 9 p.m. Singapore time. And have fun. I'll post the link about my masterclass for Tetra Map certification later underneath the comment section. And if you're interested to finding out more about how to become a, tet a certified Tetra Map facilitator, I'm happy to share the information with you. All right, so with that, thanks very much, everybody, and have a good and awesome evening. Chair Wang here signing off, and all good wishes. Goodbye.